Greetings, fellow true believers. Have you ever wondered what happened at the end of Dracula in Bram Stoker's novel? Well, of course you have. Who hasn't? So stick around and I'll tell you about Dracula The Return, a comic book that explores that exact concept. Dracula the Return is the brainchild of Deka Stoker, the great grand nephew of Bram Stoker and Chris McCauley. Together they have created the Stokerverse, trademark pending, I'm sure, which uh, promises to be a rich setting within which we will see the events directly preceding Bram Stoker's novel, Dracula. So if you haven't read the novel, that's okay. Uh, I'm sure you've seen a Dracula movie, and you you know that at the end, Dracula is hunted down and eventually killed. So, this is what comes next. So, here is the cover of the digital version. Uh, also, there is a painted pinup in the back of the print version. You can see the, the print version over my shoulder here. This is the first book of the Stokerverse from Scratch Comics. And this story arc is called Cult of the White Worm. It is written by Deka Stoker and Chris McCauley, with art from Chris Geary. And we have the title page again. Uh, I like the layouts. The graphic design is nice. Deka Stoker starts us out with a brief but very informative introduction about his great, great, his great granduncle, great granduncle. Pretty uh, cool stuff. So if you don't know a lot about Bram Stoker, the man, I encourage you to to give that a read. And after that, we have a six-page uh, short story called Dracula's Devil, and this gives us an overview of how Dracula became a vampire. What you know, what he went through to get there beginning as a mortal man. So pretty cool. I I, I want to say that's required reading. It, you know, I feel like it adds a lot of context. So uh, I'm certainly going to encourage you to get the digital copy because that's the copy that comes with this additional text. The story opens on the climax of the final battle between Dracula and his pursuers, just after Quincy Morris has been mortally wounded. Holmwood and Harker deal the final blows, and the curse of the undead has been lifted from Mina. From there, we follow Dracula on his journey through the underworld, and he has to fight his way through this nether realm to uh, petition the dark powers that granted him vampirism in the first place to show that he is worthy of being returned to Earth. As he's doing so, his loyal followers, the Cult of the White Worm, are preparing a ritual for his resurrection. And so we are shown that Dracula's physical body is reconstituted, and the final part of the ritual is to revive him. And that is exactly what happens. Dracula's journey and battle through the underworld must have taken some considerable amount of time because uh, in that time, the, uh, the party of Van Helsing, Homewood, Harker, and Mina have uh, begun their journey back to London. And the impression I get from this story is that they are either pulling into the harbor at London or they're very close. But uh, as they're on the boat, Mina senses that Dracula has been revived. And so it's obvious that he's probably not quite finished with this cast of characters yet. Now, the first backup story in this book is called In Fear We Trust. And it's about a demented psychologist who has set up a sanitarium 
to cure people of their fears. And he is apparently building upon the work of Dr. Seward. You see here, little, little Easter egg, little Easter egg there. Uh, he's got a paper from Dr. Seward on his desk. And so he admits patients and charges them exorbitant amounts of money to basically lock them up in his sanitarium and expose them to their worst fears until they are either cured or go insane. This artwork here is uh, very creepy, uh, very appropriate for, the, for this horror genre. Honestly, all of the artwork throughout this book uh, fits that bill. And I'm not quite sure among the three, among these three tales, uh, which one has the artwork that is the most macabre. And the final backup story, A Mother's Love, uh, details the activity of a what appears to be a, a vampirized or at least partially vampirized woman who is stealing children from the city to take them below to become part of her abominable family. Once again, uh, you know, this art here tinted uh, sort of red, sort of reddish, almost like old blood from the look of it. Very, very creepy, very horrific. Uh, so I, you can see what I mean when I say I'm not quite sure who has the most uh, disturbing artwork in this book. Uh, Chris Geary, of course, uh, was the artist for the main Dracula story. And David Hitchcock is doing the In Fear We Trust story. And then we have... Um, Sai Chinook, I'm going to assume, is doing the art for for this final story of Mother's Love. So uh, very uh, very horror appropriate. Uh, one criticism I would level at this is that we probably could have used better credits on the uh, on the backup stories. I was I was able to guess who the artists were because I have uh, another book from Scratch Comics in which David Hitchcock has done the artwork there, so it was pretty easy to make that, that comparison and, and see that it was his artwork as well. Uh, Tai Chinook, I don't think I've seen his work before, but I like what I'm seeing. Definitely these guys have, have got a feel for the horror genre in a big way. And then here we have the, the Blue Fur Lady pin up from A Mother's Love. And a nice little one-page backup short story about a, a servant of Dracula's, who uh, I think is probably still at play here. I think he's in the main uh, Dracula story in this book, though I'm not going to make public my guess about which character he is. So I, I, we'll see if we'll see if I'm right when the next issues come out. And this is the pinup painting of the main cover, which you can see over my shoulder here. I always enjoy seeing things like this. We, we see the initial pencils here for uh, some of the sequentials from the main story. It's always really cool to get a look at that sort of behind the scenes work in progress stuff. Uh, overall, I greatly enjoyed this book. Uh, you can get the print copy and the digital copy and uh, I'm going to recommend strongly that you get both of them and uh, because the digital copy has some really great supplemental material that I think uh, you will enjoy reading and it adds a lot of context to the story in the comic book. So uh, links to get those will be in the description as per usual. Uh, the artwork and the writing, uh, I have to say, were great. Uh, you know, the art from Chris Geary David Hitchcock and, and uh, Cy Chinook is disturbingly gritty with uh, um, the journey through the underworld in particular is not for the faint of heart. Uh, it, there's some disturbing material in there, which includes uh, some nudity and some very graphic violence. So be aware of that. Uh, the story has a solid plot, which builds successfully upon the foundation laid down by Bram Stoker over a century ago. Uh, the dialogue is is believable with lots of strange uh, lettering for some of the more supernatural dialogue you'll see, especially uh, Dracula going through the underworld and just sort of adds 
to the overall horrific ambiance of, of that story. So in summary, Dracula, the return from Stokerverse and Scratch Comics from Deka Stoker and Chris McCauley is a, is a recommend from me. I, I think you'll enjoy it. I certainly did. Once again, I want to thank you for tuning in. And if you don't mind, please leave me a like and a subscribe and ding that little bell down there so you'll get a notification for the next video. And we will see you next time. Excelsior.